think whoever wrote the song was probably a free will Baptist by kind of what it's saying. But yet it's saying something very profound because it's based out of 1 John chapter 4 and chapter 3 there. You know, the Bible says uh, we're supposed to love one another. That's right. Uh, Amen, brother. Uh, the Bible says, how can you love God whom you have not seen and then turn right around and say you hate your brother whom you have seen? Amen. Amen. Uh, because, see, man is made in the image of God and was made in the image of God. This is why all men uh, are deserving of respect. And um, every human being is someone for whom Christ died. Yes, that's right. a soul yeah. that needs to be saved. Amen. 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 That's right. Amen. That's right. Maybe that's they're soul. very unlikable, right. but they're still a soul for whom Christ died. Right. That's right. right. And right. he wants to save. Amen. And so we're cautioned in the Bible to be very careful about uh, what we say about our brother and do. And especially as Christians, we're, hold to, we're called to, to a higher standard. We're told to the line of uh, being loving and kind, even as Jesus was. <laughs> right. right. And, uh, you know, even Jesus had one disciple that was a devil. Right. And, yeah. and he wasn't pulling anything over on Jesus. Jesus knew he was a devil. Right. And Jesus very easily could have cast him out of his own church anytime he wanted to. But Jesus did. Right. And so, when the Bible says comfort the feeble-minded, <laughs> and all the other things it says about being patient with people, we see that Jesus exemplified that Amen. in the New right. Testament. But this little song goes like this. There are many people who will say they are Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they live like Christians on the Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. But come Monday morning till the coming Sunday, they will fight their neighbor all along the way. So the chorus says, oh, you don't love God if you don't love your neighbor. If you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets in trouble and you don't try to help him, right. then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. That's right. Amen. Amen. In the Holy Bible, in the book of Matthew, read the 18th chapter in the 21st verse. Jesus plainly tells us that we must have mercy there's a special warning in the 35th verse. If you don't love God, if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets in trouble and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor. And you don't love God. That's why Jesus said in John 17, yeah. that the world will see we love one another and they'll believe that Jesus was sent to the Father. But if we don't love each other like we're supposed to, right. then the world's got every right to reject Jesus Christ Amen. as a Savior sent from God. So the last verse says, There's a God Almighty and you've got to love Him if you want salvation and a home on high. If you say you love Him while you hate your neighbor, then you don't have religion and you just told a lie. Amen. Amen. Oh, you don't love God, if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets in trouble and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor, and you don't love God. That's a great song. <laughs> I heard that on the way to church this morning, and I had to write it down, because I said, boy, that's a great, uh, a great song. So let's run over some verses today. I want to run over some verses with you about gossip. Because more people have done more destruction with their tongue yeah. than they ever have with a sledgehammer or a gun. And as Christians, we're warned to be aware of these things and not be so easily deceived by the devil. Now, you can understand somebody in the world being deceived by the devil, getting caught up in these things and keeping up with the Joneses and all this detail with what the world of flesh and the devil gets into. But to save people, we're supposed to be listening to the Spirit of God and looking to the Word of God. Uh, so I want to show you a few verses that deal with gossip here this morning so that you'll be aware of these things. And when you hear somebody running their mouth, you can sit them down and say, let me show you a couple of verses Pastor Dan showed us on Sunday here lately. Chapter 6, verse 16. These six things that the Lord hate. Yeah. Did you know God is the same God today as he was 
when he wrote the Old Testament. Amen. Thank God we've got a New Testament, and we have a better covenant in Christ's blood. Yeah. But God ain't changed a bit. Right. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible Amen. says. Amen. And if he's hated something in the Old Testament, he still hates it today. Amen. He right. It That's makes right. him want to vomit. Amen. It makes him want to puke, like he says in Revelation. Amen. These six things that the Lord hates. Thank God my God's a balanced being. My God is not just the God of love. That's probably the devil that you're serving. Right. <coughs> my God is a balanced God. My God hates some things. Amen. In fact, there are six things he hates. He hates seven yeah. are abomination. Now, the word abomination means, you know, it means you can't stand it. Like the abominable snowman. You can't stand it if you got around it because he's such a strong smelling skunk ape. There's a reason why the abominable snowman is called abominable. That means that God hates some things, or some things He hates. Right. Sort of like queers in the Bible. He hates queers. Amen. Amen. He really does. <laughs> That's right. Six things the Lord hates, yea, seven are abomination to Him. But we're not going to go to Deuteronomy. We'll just take our Proverbs. Amen. Here, now let's see what He said. A proud look. Mm -hmm. Yep. See? It doesn't mean that necessarily you are proud, but it's just you're looking proud. A proud look. You know, did you ever see the president He's receiving all that applause? Oh, yeah. Congress. Yeah, that ain't a proud look. I ain't never seen one. A lying tongue. I'm not trying to describe the president this morning. Just pay attention to what I'm trying to preach. <laughs> People who lie. There's been so many lies been told about this church and about me as its pastor. I wonder how many of you will have roasted preacher for you to get home tonight. The only thing that disturbs me is you're going to have it with relish. Amen. <laughs> a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood. And heart that devises wicked imaginations. There you Feet go. to be swift in running to mischief. Mm -hmm. A false witness that speaketh lies. There it is. And he that soweth discord. Among brethren. Amen. So there's some things God hates, my friend. Mm -hmm. We say that here. We notice how that last one, he that sows discord among brethren. How are you going to sow discord among brethren? Run your mouth. That's good, Charity. I like it. Charity said one seed at a time. That's how you sow discord. You go over here and say this little thing over here. Then you go over here and say this thing over here. Then you say this over here. Then you add this over here later on. And next thing you know, man, there's something grown out of, out of whack now. Something's out of control. Right. And now your pride's in the way, so now you've got to follow through. And that's why a lot of people are missing this morning. <coughs> Proverbs 10, 18. Woman came forward to the preacher, took his hand. She said, "Preacher, I've come to lay my tongue on the altar." He said, "Well, we've got about thirty foot of it here, and if that ain't enough, we've got another thirty foot out in the barn behind the church." Amen. <laughs> Some people have an awful long tongue, man. <laughs> Proverbs ten eighteen: He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander, is a fool. Uh -oh. See, you can run that thing backwards. You ever met a fool? I've met plenty of them over the years. And every time you'll find they'll hide hatred with lying lips. And they'll be slandering. They'll tell half truths so hoping you pick up the wrong half. And you better watch them. Because if you do that, you're a fool. Proverbs 11:13. A tellbearer reveal his secrets. But he that is a faithful spirit, spirit he that's of a faithful spirit, <coughs> concealeth the matter. Listen, you will hear anything. You will hear anything. And anybody can say anything. Uh huh. But that don't mean you got to go repeat it. Yeah, uh -huh. right. Especially if you know it's going to sow discord. Right. It's going to cause strife. 
It's going to cause a person to maybe misunderstand something. It might cause somebody to not bring their kids to church anymore. Their kids go out and get into dope and go on to all the wickedness and worldliness that they will suffer and go get into it because they got discouraged. Mm-hmm. They got discouraged and they were so foolish to sacrifice tomorrow on the altar today and not think ahead of how their little hurt pride and them pulling their family out of church is going to destroy their family. Because that Bible is clear, my friend. You will reap what you sow. Yep. Amen. So it's very interesting what the Bible has to say. Proverbs 11, 13, A talebearer revealeth secrets, but he that is a faithful spirit concealeth the matter. The Bible speaks of another place where love covers a multitude of sin. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah. See, if you're being real loving and kind, you don't want to necessarily repeat everything. You want to just stick with good things. Like the Bible says things about things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are lovely, things that are pure, things that are Good report. Amen. Those are the things you want to think of. He said in Philippians 4. Amen. 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 Verse 19. Proverbs 17, 9. He that covereth the transgression seeketh love. See? But he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when you hear something, it's best not to repeat it. That's right. You just let it go. They're having a bad day. You've had a bad day. Uh -huh. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. Can't they have a bad day? Yeah. Can't they vent once in a while? Can't you say, well, God bless you, brother. I'm praying, praying for you and, and, and leave them? Uh -huh. And not say, well, give me some more. Let me hear some more. Right. You know, it works two ways, amen? Yeah. Yeah. As the old saying goes, it takes two to tango, amen? <laughs> Proverbs 18.8. 8, the words of a talebearer are as wounds. Yeah. And they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Uh -huh. And the most fun thing about listening to a tellbearer is to know that while they think they've got you on the QT, and I'm sharing something with you and no one else, you're my pal, I'm going to tell you this is what I think about so-and-so. But the truth is, give them a couple of weeks, they're behind your back now. Right. Yeah. And guess what they're saying about you? <laughs> yep. They're as unstable as water, man. They just love to run their mouth. Finger. And do the work of the devil. Because like the song says, they don't know God. <coughs> Proverbs 20, verse 19. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. <coughs> Therefore meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Because he might be flattering you today, but tomorrow he's going to be stabbing you in the back. Mm -hmm. It's hard for a leopard to change his spots. <laughs> Amen. That's what the Bible says. Amen. <laughs> Thank God the blood of Jesus avails for all. Amen. And my friend, you can change, but you got to want to change. Yeah. you got to want to change from the heart. Mm -hmm. you got to make some choices for right. the decision maker down deep. Amen. you got a purpose in your heart right. to do what God says. From and out of the heart. To shut your mouth. When you're supposed to shut it and open it when you're supposed to open it. Right. Proverbs 26 20. Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. A preacher was preaching on this text one day. He says, I know where the trouble in this church is. It's Mrs. Wood. And the old man, he's doing his stuff, his buddy got real quiet. Nobody amended him. Said, man, what did I do wrong after church? He said, What happened? And he said, The lady who's making all the trouble in church is Mrs. Wood. <laughs> That's her name. The Bible's just making this point that you can't have no fire if there ain't no wood there first. You know, somebody's got to be stirring it up. Don't you? Where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. So where there is no tail bearer, the strife ceases. As coals are to burning coals. Some of you don't have wood heater no more. You don't have a clue what we're talking about. Man, I see that wood heater about every day. I definitely know what it's talking about. And I love it when I go out there. There's enough coals left to keep the fire going. Uh -huh. I don't have to light it from scratch again. <laughs> uh -huh. As coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious man 
to kindle strife. God forbid you are to be a contentious person. The words of a talebearer are as wounds and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. You know, the, the goofy government thinks now it's up to them to try to mother us and take care of us so they're passing laws against bullying. And, uh, and these principles are why they're doing that. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible bears out this truth. Now the honest to God truth under the common law is sticks and stones may break my bones but words will never harm me. Right. Now that's a fact of the common law. That's why we recognize freedom of press in this country. Amen. But at the same time uh -huh. you got to be careful. <laughs> you got a right to preach what you want, say what you want. The Supreme Court recognizes fighting words as fighting words. When you start calling people names, yeah, you ain't got Bible for it. That's right. You're on thin ice now. That's right. Okay, you might not be able to back it up. That's right. Amen. And so the Bible warns us. History is replete with people in church. Who teenagers in the church couldn't handle long tongued women running their mouths. Some good little Christian boy doing the best he knew to do. Finally got his driver's license. And he's doing the best he knew to do to be a witness. He told the boys about Christ. He offered to pick up the jocks and take them out and, and take them to, to church and take them home uh, from school. And he didn't know it. Some of them jocks had brought some. Uh, uh -huh. Beer and put it in the back seat floor of his car. Uh -huh. <coughs> when he went to church on Sunday, Mrs. Wood saw that beer in the back seat of his car. So this is at Grand Rapids, Michigan, I'm talking. Old Mrs. Wood got on that phone. Next thing that little boy heard through the grapevine, they got him out drinking after school. And he's trying to witness to him. And that boy went and hung himself. Because of the long tongue women in his church. Uh huh. So the Bible says, the words of a talebearer are as wounds, and they go down into the innermost parts of the belly. Amen. Let's jump to the New Testament now. How about James? Oh, James has got some wisdom for us. Amen. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 11. Speak not evil one of another, brethren. <laughs> I can almost hear the sarcasm when he wrote that word, brethren. <laughs> he that speaketh evil of his brother and judges his brother speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. You come to judge. You come to judge. That's no doubt where it comes from. Amen. Amen. That's exactly where it comes from. Let's look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now the Bible speaks you can be saved and you can be cursed. You can be saved and you can have damnation. That's what the word damnation means. It means to be cursed. The Bible speaks of how that you can eat and drink damnation to yourself if you were to take the Lord's Supper unworthily, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. 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 You guys sleeping or reading your digest or something? First Timothy 5.12, having damnation because they have cast off their first faith, and whither they learn to be idle. Notice what it says. Uh-huh. 
wandering about from house to house uh -huh. and not only idle but tappers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not, not. Mm -hmm. there it is that's what the Bible cautions us about here. Amen. We were warned against it because it's so easy to get involved in. That's why the best thing you can say sometimes when someone says, won't you come over, is, no, I'm afraid I can't. Right. Amen? <laughs> For some Amen. people you can't Amen. fellowship with Amen. and fool with Amen. because the devil's behind it. Amen. chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication. Now, again, now, if you can speak things that are fine and talk about things that are honest, right. pure, <coughs> true, honest, pure, like it says in Philippians 4. Mm -hmm. If you can deal with those things, then that everything's fine. But boy, when you know it's going to head down a certain rabbit hole, uh -huh. why yeah. go there? Abstain yeah. from all why pain. Why all that trouble with devils that can come into your home life Right. Because you gave place to the devil. Yeah. Right. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. That it may minister grace unto the others. <coughs> help them grow in God, grow in the Word of God, grow in, be better what they should be and have more grace in their life. Right. That's the trouble with so much legalism in the world. Rules and regulations. People want to have rules and regulations and outline God right out of them. Right. You got to watch that stuff. Amen. Another thing so bad about the corporate church because it's so organized and run by committees. Yeah. God ain't nowhere near the place. Amen. You're right. Oh, Amen. No spontaneity. That's right. No, no room for God. No room for the Holy Ghost. To Amen. Get to That's, right. That's right. Amen. 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 First yeah. Thessalonians chapter 4. You want something to study? We're going over somebody's house to have a prayer meeting ain't nothing to study. Mm -hmm. That you study to be quiet. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. There's you something to study. Mm -hmm. Come to my house, we're just going to sit around and be quiet. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> Amen. And we do well to be taught by him as well. Mm -hmm. 
Second Thessalonians, and Sam. chapter three. Second Thessalonians, chapter three, verse six. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother. I'm not talking about the dope dealer down the street. I'm not talking about the rapper down the street. I'm talking about your Christian brother. He can get goofy. He can get screwy. Withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorder. That's what it says to do. And not after the tradition which he received of us. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow us, for we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Yes, right. everything decently. And That's right. <laughs> Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample right. of you to follow us. Now, That's do you think right. Paul said, the Apostle Paul set an example before them, and said, oh, well, let me tell you about old brother Bruce now. I heard something about him the other day. <coughs> oh, yeah. Old brother Eric, he's going to leave the church. He told me he's going to leave the church. He can't handle this either. I can't handle it. He can't handle it. And I'm finding out who else can't handle it in the church. And we're fixing it all for a while. Please go the sooner the quicker, because I've got some good people I want to get in your chair. I'd like to have some people here that want to be here that love that more. Amen. 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 I don't need people that walk disorderly. Amen. Uh -huh. I mean, I love you and I love the devil. I love Judas just like Jesus did. But come on. If you're going to do something, do it. Let's get, get with the program, man. Jesus is coming and I've got to get some serious people in here. Amen. Verse 10, for even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busybodies. Now, isn't that what he said earlier about yeah. people being busybodies in other men's affairs and going from house to house? Yeah. Gotta watch it. Gotta watch it. Now, again, the worst part of all of this is guess what? You can go house to house and you don't have to leave your house. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Just turn on that computer and hit that button. Yeah. Guess what I heard about Brother Dave this week? Well, here's what he told me on Facebook. Who does he think he is? Uh -huh. there you go right there. That Bible clearly tells you Amen. you're supposed to talk to a man face to face. You got no business emailing Amen. anybody. Swat. Right. 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 Amen. And man, you're busting your buttons, telling your wife what a great soul and a great witness and great man of God you are. You got half the people on the computer that you have subscribing to you to think you're something. But look at the millions who don't. But the devil's got you deceived into thinking, man, I is somebody. Amen. And the truth is, that's that pride. Didn't we see some things in that Amen. pride book that God hates? Yeah. Why are you imitate that? Right. Yeah. Next thing you know, man, you're busting your buttons. And those things God hates is man, just flowing into your life. Because the devil's got a new avenue, and you don't even think that somehow you violated Scripture. Is you heard something, you want to tell it on somebody. And that computer, man, everybody who's read your Facebook site or whatever it is, and I don't know, I don't fool with that, but hey, whoever man, does, they're a legend in their own eyes. <laughs> and isn't that what it does? How many people have we heard of? A husband uh, ran off with somebody uh, they met on the internet. Right. <laughs> or some wife ran off from her husband by meeting some dude on the internet. Mm -hmm. He portrays himself as something on that internet that he ain't, obviously. That's right. Uh -huh. But they somehow believe it. Uh -huh. And that thing has busted up more families because people let it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because it's a subtle way the devil has of coming into our life right. and revealing our heart with all of its mischief in it. And we think we're a great champion for God. God we're a defender of the faith. We stand up for the Bible more than anybody else ever stands up for the Bible. While we're sitting down, that's right. Going from house to house without leaving. And the house. devil has deceived us. Amen. 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 We're busy bodies. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Busy bodies in other men's affairs. 
And my friend God is not well pleased Amen. with this silliness, with this wickedness. Amen. As I've said, it's cost people their lives. It yes, can. Sir. Those wounds can go deep. First Peter 4. First Peter 4. Verse 15 and 16. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer. You say, oh yeah, man, them guys are in jail, man. Christians shouldn't have to go to jail being uh, with a charge on them like these things, a murderer or a thief. Mm -hmm, or an right. Evildoer. Well, wait Amen. a minute. He's not done. Mm -hmm. Or is it busy? Mm -hmm. I mean, who does this first pope think he is? He's loving people that run their mouth and gossips as being just as wicked and evil and as gross a sinner as a murderer. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir, brother. Seems like John 8, 44 talks about the devil being a murderer and a liar yeah. from the beginning. Yeah. 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 Which he's behind this stuff. That's why the Bible says God's not the author of confusion. Right. Amen. If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Amen. Let's see here now. I've got ahead of myself. <laughs> Verse 15. Let none of you suffer as a murderer or a thief or as an evildoer or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, right. let him not be ashamed. Right. Amen. That's right. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Amen. Yes. It's okay if people wrongfully <laughs> accuse you of being a murderer. If someone wrongfully accuse you of being a thief. Someone wrongfully accuse you of being an evildoer because you're street preaching and you're just trying to do right and stand up for God and you're a real true Christian. And they wrongfully say, oh, this man's just going from house and he's a bit anybody. The truth is, no, you're just trying to have church and have to meet in secret because they're out to kill you if they invite you. Have a church, you know, and it's not sanctioned by the state church. Right. Amen. Right. Right. So now let's go to 1 John 3. John 3, pick it up here. I wrote myself a note and I seem to have lost it. <laughs> Let's pick it up at 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, the children of the devil. Did you know the devil's got children? Uh huh. Yeah. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Oh, there it is now. Many people fault us because we're patient with people. We don't kick people out of the church over any frivolous, silly thing. Right. We give them the benefit of the, bit of the doubt and say, well, they're God's kid. Let God walk them. Amen. 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 We try to be just as long-suffering and gentle as we can be. To show love. Right. Even if we don't love, we have to show love. Amen. That's what the Bible says. And yet there's some long-tongued devils that would have you to believe that it's their way or the highway, that it's them or us. If you don't do what we want, we're out of here. Please don't let the door hit you on the way out. See, you wouldn't want to be yet. But this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Amen, brother. Not as Cain. Uh -huh. See, some people yeah. love, but they love like Cain. That's why it's called sugar cane. Yeah. Who was that wicked one? Now we're back to John 8, 44. See? And slew his brother. Yep. This is his brother he's talking about. Uh huh. That's the saddest part about a lot of this stuff. A lot of this has to do with people that are family. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous, and he couldn't handle it. Mm -hmm. That self-righteousness that Cain had caused him to kill his truly righteous brother. That's right. That's right. Did, you listen? Did you get that? Mm -hmm. That's right. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. If you've been saved, there is a love that's been shed abroad in your heart. Paul explains that in Romans. You don't have to explain it, but I mean, you can taste of it once in a while. I know I have. 
Uh -huh. I described different times how I've been beat up on occasion and how it was like I wasn't even getting beat up. It's like I was watching myself get beat up. Yeah. And my son was telling me one time, he said, man, Dad, if I was you, I would have done this and that. I said, yes, yeah, son, I'm sure I thought the same thing. But when you're at that moment and you're in that place for Christ and suffering it, it's just like the Bible says in Peter, that God does give you a spirit of joy that comes upon you. Yep. And there really is something to tasting and knowing that love for the brethren, even when they're beaten up on. <laughs> Amen. Either you got it or you ain't, or you don't have it. Yep. Praise the Lord. And like I said, if you ain't got it, it's because you don't love God and you don't know God. Mm -hmm. Amen. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now check that out. Dig that. Yeah, absolutely. If you can't love your brother, if he's got you so upset, I can't handle it anymore. I thought I can do all things for Christ, but strength for me. Oh, I guess you can't. You don't know Christ. Yes, amen, brother. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but whoso hate, hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and showeth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? <laughs> My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Yeah. I could, I don't, I'm not looking for, I'm not interested in anybody that says King James only. I'm not looking for the guy that lives the King James only. Amen. That's, Amen. Right. <laughs> That's what he's saying there. <laughs> Let's live the kingdom. Amen. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. Amen. Hereby we know we are of the truth, and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Right. Whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because he, we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. This is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. Amen. As he gave us commandment. And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the spirit which he hath given us. Right. Amen. 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 It's a wonderful thing to be able to lean on that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, meekness, Amen. and temperance, that the Holy Ghost is in you doing all nine things. Right. You're to experience that from time to time. You're to lean on that from time to time. You don't have to manufacture love, joy, peace. That's right. No, That's right. it's That's already right. there. That's right. You just tap in on it. That's right. Amen. But if you can't tap in on it, it's because you need to get saved. Amen. Right. Amen. You've Amen. never gotten it yet. Mm. If the, love abroad, if the love of God ain't shed abroad in your heart yet, of course, then you can't love nobody. That's easy to understand. Yes, sir. Right. Amen. 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 Verse 7. Verse John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God. <laughs> God, for God is love. Right. Now, love is not God. See, it's right. not the opposite. God is love. But love isn't God. Yes. Right. That's where the world gets it all wrong and sings these silly love songs and think that they know God as much as anybody else and they don't have a foggiest idea who God is. Right. And this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only son, only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Amen. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. Amen. I mean, he loved the church, gave himself for it, and it was unlovable. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. for sure. That's yes. Right. Amen. That's Remember right. Jesus had his little disciples and had his church going, and it wasn't perfect. That's right. right. Sure. Peter's going to deny him. Judas is going to betray him. It wasn't perfect. Right. But he loved the church enough to die for it. Amen. That's right. Amen. And someday 
His church is going to be standing before him spotless. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Without yeah. spot or wrinkle, washing the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 Mm. What, right, what love. Yes, sir. What glorious love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also love one another. No man hath seen God at any time, and if we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. Ah, ha, ha. So again, yes, there is a sanctifying process. There's some things we got to grow. Yes. Yes. That's right. Amen. That's, right. That's why we can be patient. We can wait on people to get around to learning the love of God. We can be merciful. We can be forgiven. It took us a while to get to where we're at. Amen. Amen. Right. We may have a ways to go. Yeah. Yeah. We might have to ask somebody else for forgiveness before That's we die. Right. Yeah. It's okay. Amen. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he hath given us of his spirit and we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoso shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he is and he in God. And we have known and believe that the love that God hath to us God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. But see, notice this juxtaposed position here. On one side we have love. Now what's the opposite of love? Yeah. Hate. Fear. Yeah. It's not hate. Mm -hmm. See, the world says the opposite of love is hate. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Hate's a good sign there is love somewhere. <laughs> no, the opposite no. of love is fear. Right, perfect. Somebody starts saying, well, I'm just afraid apostasy is going to come in the church because I'm not going to get my way. People are going to do what I say they should do. I'm just afraid. Brother Chris, I love you, but I'm just afraid. <laughs> Brother Lux, I love you, but I'm just afraid. Brother Brent, I love you, but I'm just afraid. You're just acknowledging that you haven't got the spirit of love, but you've got a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. Right. Which Second Timothy warns us: God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. Amen. So now that you got a spirit of fear, what other spirits are you bringing into your life and into your family's <laughs> life? Mm -hmm. Right. Because what you sow, you're going to reap. Mm -hmm. And you're charging Betty out there where angels fear to trot. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you'll reap it all right. You'll reap it in your life. You'll reap it in your family's life. Don't play the fool. Amen. So he says, verse 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he, he is, is, so Amen. are we Amen. in this world. There is no fear in love. You can't say, I love you, Brother Chris, but I'm afraid. You can't say that. Those, those two words can't be in the same sentence together. See what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Right. As soon as you say, but I'm afraid or I fear, well, wait a minute, I thought you said you love me. Mm -hmm. And what does the verse say? There's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. <coughs> fear is torment. What you need to say is, Brother Chris, I love you, and I'm praying for you, and I know God is going to help you. That's right. That's right. God Amen. is going to give you victory. Amen. 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 There's no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Amen. Fear can't be your motivation, my friend, if you know the Lord. That's why Paul could hire a house and preach and teach in it with confidence, the last verse of the book of Acts tells us. No fear in love, but perfect fear, perfect love casts out fear because fear hath only meant he that feareth is not made perfect in love. Now he might have some love, but it's not perfected in. Again, the Bible is clear, there's two things that have to grow in you as you're saved. One is love, and the other is faith. The Bible speaks of people with no faith and people with no love. Then the people the Bible speaks of people with little faith, and the Bible speaks of people with little love. Then the Bible speaks of a great faith and great love. And the Bible speaks of a perfect faith and a perfect love. Amen. But it's a progressive thing. Right. And that's why 
if you really know the love of God, you can be patient and you can be merciful with people. That's right. Because you know it took you a while to get to where you're at, and you got Amen. a real good hunch that it's probably you got a ways to go yet. Amen. <laughs> that's, right. that's for sure. Yes. Amen. And that's why we can say honest to God truth about something and judge a matter. Because we can judge the fruit, but we don't have a right to judge the root, like Jesus warned us. We can't say a person's coming off because in their heart, no, you got to watch that stuff. Uh -huh. If somebody's singing off key, you say, honest to God, man, he sure sang off key. But boy, didn't he sing with the love of God in it. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 You can be honest. Nobody's saying you got to cover something up and not be honest. But you can't go around running your mouth being evil. And repeating evil and not trying to cover up some evil and say that you love someone. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. He we love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother. Hate his brother. Yeah. He's a liar. The truth is right. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God? Whom we have not seen. And this commandment have we from him that we who loveth God, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Amen. Amen. Yep. Amen. 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 That's what the Bible says. And so, like the old song says, I'm going to sing it for you here one more time. say they are Christians and they live like Christians on the Sabbath day but come Monday morning till the coming Sunday they will fight their neighbor all along the way oh you don't love God if you don't love your neighbor if you gossip about him if you never have mercy if he gets in trouble and you don't try to help him then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. Amen. In the Holy Bible, in the book of Matthew, read the 18th chapter and the 21st verse. Mm -hmm. Jesus plainly tells us that we must have mercy. There's a special warning in the 35th verse. Right. Oh, you don't. God, if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets into trouble and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. There's a God Almighty and you've got to love him. If you want salvation and a home on high, if you say you love him while you hate your neighbor, then you don't have religion. You just told him. A lie. Oh, you don't love God if you don't love your neighbor, if you gossip about him, if you never have mercy, if he gets in trouble and you don't try to help him, then you don't love your neighbor and you don't love God. God. Let's all stand by our heads and pray. Lord, thank you for your word. We know it's a truth, Lord. Help us to be everything you called us and want us to be. Forgive us for our many sins and shortcomings, Lord. But we're so thankful we have the Holy Spirit that dwells us and that He has shed the love of God abroad in our hearts so that we kind of know what to compare. The hatred and the silly associations that the world has. We know what real love is because you loved us. And demonstrated your love and sent in Jesus to die on the old rugged cross and he rose again from the dead that Amen. third day. And Lord, we know what love is. And so we now love him because you first loved us and gave so much for us. Lord, we're trying to give a little bit back. Help us, Lord. You know we believe. Help our unbelief. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. All right.